Um, Tony Blair says that a woman has a vagina and a man has a penis as he takes aim at politicians in a muddle over the common sense So Some are saying this is a thinly veiled swipe at uh, Keir Starmer. You heard Zoe Grindelwald then just uh, uh, saying we should be more compassionate. And me trying to say, trying to find the words, not very well, that um, I worry that issues like this uh, work against genuine transgender people because I believe they've been hijacked by people who take it down the wrong route. She talks about compassion. I talk about compassion on both sides. I think it gets to a point in this country, Kate Barker, where you can't say Jack for fear of being cancelled. I really do. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're right. There's a lot of things to think about there. I mean, first of all, it's astonishing that a, a statement of fact it makes it into a news article in The Times. Mm. You know, I, I think what Tony Blair is really good at doing is communicating a popular idea without sounding like a populist. He always sounds intensely reasonable. And of course, it is completely mainstream that, you know, we know what a man is, we know what a woman is, and every reasonable person thinks it's insane that any man who says he's a woman can go into a women's space. However, it's true what you say about, about kindness and about thinking about people's feelings. And these have been these have been somewhat hijacked because, you know, Tony Blair may have entered this uh, debate again today, sort of scratching his head about this peculiar muddle that the, that the politicians have got themselves into, uh, which is a bit disingenuous because it was his government in the 2000, in 2004, which introduced the Gender Recognition Act, which kicked this whole thing off. As the interesting thing about the Gender Recognition Act is that it, the wording of it was that it allowed transsexuals to gain a gender recognition certificate. Now, it, there are the transsexuals were a tiny number of men who felt so tortured by their own sense of dysphoria about their bodies that they wanted to have operations to remove their genitals. And I think that when that law was made, it was made in exactly the right spirit. There were a tiny number of people suffering. How can we make their lives easier? And it feels like a compassionate thing to do. But what today's activists have done is they've they've shortened the word transsexual into trans, but they've increased the number of people who, who they believe are represented by that term exponentially. So trans today doesn't mean transsexuals, that small group of people who really suffer and really need help. It also means transvestites, which is mainly straight men who like to dress in women's clothes for erotic purposes. And it includes trans lesbians, uh, oh. who are, again, straight men who want to pretend that they're lesbians and call actual lesbians bigoted. If hold, they on, hold, on a, hold on a second, hold on. Now, see, now we're getting a bit technical. A trans lesbian, what's that? Oh, please. Uh, right. So, <laughs> A trans lesbian is somebody who doesn't want to be a lesbian. No, no, no. A trans, a trans lesbian yeah. is a is a straight bloke. Right. He likes to cross dress. Right. He's still attracted to women, so he wants to go along to women's events. If you open a, a dating app for lesbians, I'm sure that's not something you've ever done. No. But if you did, right. you would find that at least twenty percent of the people on there are men. Some of them are bearded. Oh. Describe themselves as lesbians. Nice. And if I, as an actual lesbian, were to say on the app, if I were, you know, looking for a partner, I were to say, actually, I'm only really in interested in biological women, I would be kicked off the app. Right? Can we, guy, can we? Can we? Can we make this? That, no, this that, uh, you're amazing. Can, can I just? Can I bring it back to something you said? You talked about gender recognition under Blair. That's fine. Yeah. I don't care what you are. This, this is. This is. This to me is common sense. Tell me if I'm wrong. Right? I just feel that we now live in a society in a world whereby whether it's just stop oil or it's it's trans or whatever it is, a certain number of Generation Z, I know the world backwards, you're a bunch of narcissistic, misogynistic, racist old gits, have jumped on it. And my argument is, is they're not doing any favours to genuine transgender people who want recognition, help or whatever. It's become a thing. And I have... Whilst I talk about sympathy, I also have sympathy, and I can, whatever word I use, right, I'm going to be slaughtered here, for people who are a man or a woman, right, who go, I'm just saying that and I'm being slaughtered for being me. That's what, in the most basic terms, Kate, that's why I think it's become yeah. unfair and has gone so far that 
I'm not going to say normal. I'm not going to mean it like that. Just everyday people go, what the hell? I can't say anything anymore for fear of well, being dumped on. Well, it's interesting that you, say, that you say that and you pick up on, you know, not sure what to say and everything I say it's is true. wrong. Because I think what we're, what we're experiencing here as part of this movement is a kind of an upside downing of language and a subverting of meaning and a deliberate confusion. And that's something I think that reflects, that's what the sort of, queer theory people what they're doing to language they also want to do to society they want to upside down it and subvert it and blur the boundaries of things in ways which are not helpful to a lot of people and certainly not helpful to um to society i would say as well about tony blair talking about um you know i i really welcome his interjection into this into this conversation because i, I don't know whether he is leading conversations in the Labour Party or indicating to them what mainstream opinion is. But I think it is having an effect and we are talking about it. But he did seem quite hung up on the idea of whether or not uh, a, somebody has a penis to be able to go into a women's space. And I would say I don't really care about that. Jeremy, have you had have you had a horrible car accident in which you, you lost your penis? I don't know, I'm laughing. Oh, great, awful. now I'm having a car accident where my knob's falling off. I'm having a bad afternoon. I don't afternoon, know, that wouldn't be funny. it wouldn't be funny at all. No. But if you did... Might be, I've had six not... kids, it might be the way I can finally deal with my issues. Go on, crack on. <laughs> well, but you wouldn't be a woman. You wouldn't be a woman the next day. You no, would be I'd a be man. a severely annoyed man without a penis. I know, well, let's hope that doesn't happen. And well, I nearly said touch wood there, but that wouldn't have been appropriate. But, um... And what you don't know is, as Jodie's just reminded me, because Jodie's turned to someone like my carer, and I'm not making you feel bad. I mean, what a mess that would be. I've only got one testicle because of testicular cancer, so I'd end up with one ball and no <laughs> penis. What an absolute disgrace I'd be. I wouldn't be able to go out in public. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Barkey, you're my favourite person in the world. I hope I don't have a car crash on the way home and lose my penis. But thank you very thank much you. indeed for being on Talk Drive. What a lovely lady. Do you want to take a call or am I going to go and check myself? 